YouTube channel. My name is Julianis and I am a real estate agent in Tampa, Florida. But today, I'm not in Tampa. Today I'm in Orlando and I am here to spend the day with Tiffany Pantozzi. And if you guys don't know her, she is the ultimate girl boss, badass lady realtor in like central Florida. She's amazing. You guys may know her because she actually listed Shaquille O'Neal's property not too long ago and I have the honor of spending the day with her and I can't believe it but I don't know what we're doing honestly. I don't know what we're doing but I know I'm gonna be kind of like spending the day with her which I was like I pinch myself. I can't believe it. I'm freaking out but remain calm. We're almost there. I am so excited guys, like this is very, very exciting. What? Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna, I don't know where to park. I don't know where to park. I'm here with Tiffany Pentosi. Hello everybody! Yes, I'm so excited. We're here in Orlando and we're gonna be following her around her day as a luxury real estate agent, which I'm so excited. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm so excited. So if you want to quickly introduce yourself to for the people that don't know you. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Tiffany Pantosi and I'm a real estate professional in Central Florida. I focus in the Orlando area, Windermere, Winter Park, originally from Miami, Florida. Um, so Florida girl, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> but definitely know all all the best places to live in Central Florida and what an amazing lifestyle you can build here. Um, one of the top professionals in the field in Central Florida. Yes. Um, and I'm excited to take you along and show you a little bit about my real estate adventures here in Orlando. <laughs> we're so excited. Thank you so much. And we're going to take a look at this amazing listing that's under contract already, right? Yeah, we're under contract already. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. So let's go take a look. I figured I would let the expert show you guys around this beautiful property. So Tiffany actually has a YouTube channel and she did a, a property tour on this home. So if you would like to see the full video, uh, be sure to check out her channel. But in the meantime, here is a little sneak peek. Hello, I'm Tiffany Pantosi. Welcome to 1324 Lake Olivia Lane. Lake Olivia Reserve is a privately gated 12 lot custom home community set off a private spring fed sandy bottom lake. This property sits on the northern shore of Lake Olivia allowing for gorgeous Florida sunsets every evening. The modern custom luxury home is designed with world class materials and impeccable attention to detail. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. She's with Best of Home and they stage beautiful luxury properties and it's always important to know different stagers so that when you have a new listing, you know who to go to to um, get the home ready so it sells quickly. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things that I'm curious, you know, your opinion. We, it's everything. We steam the bed, steam any kind of window treatments. Mm -hmm. You put up window treatments? So we're done with the meeting with the stager. Now we're, yes. where are we heading to right now? So we just finished meeting with the stager and now we're gonna go downtown to look at a venue that we're looking to potentially host a, our big launch event for our new brand. Let's go. Very exciting. Okay, here yeah, we go. Yeah, absolutely. Get it on camera. <laughs> okay, hold on, let me put in the count where we're going real quickly. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, can I introduce you guys to the channel? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is Devani. Hi. And this is Caitlin. Hi. Mm -hmm. So tell tell us a little bit about, about what you do with Tiffany. So I'm the marketing manager, and Caitlin's our marketing intern. Yes. We basically run her day to day social, help her with content creation, um, digital print, everything. Mm -hmm. Anything really pertaining to marketing. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's not just the one. It's the, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This, awesome. this this whole production. It's there's a lot of people that are involved to make it happen seamlessly every day. It's important for me, I can't be everything and everywhere. And as you start to grow your business mm -hmm. and scale your business, you'll realize that if you want to continue growing, you have to bring great people um, onto your team to help you. So one of the best 
investments I ever made, first mm -hmm. and foremost, mm -hmm. was getting a transaction coordinator. Do you have one yet? I have one, but I haven't used her yet. Oh, girl. <laughs> you got to start. Even though I know a lot of the times you're like, in the beginning, you want to do all the steps because yeah. you do want to understand them mm -hmm. and you want to know what is happening in your transaction, right? Yeah. And God forbid you have to jump in, you need to know your business. Yeah. Absolutely. But you, even if you have the time to do it, the point is that all those little things that you could ha be having somebody else do for you mm -hmm. while you're maybe prospecting, right? Yeah. Your, t your time is more valuable to be used in other places for your business instead of bogging you down on the hundred different things that have to happen once you go under contract, right? Yeah. So even if you have the time, you're like, oh, I have the time, I might as well do it. No, mm -hmm. you should be doing other things for your business. Mm -hmm. Let a, you know, a qualified transaction coordinator stay on top of all your timelines, all your paperwork, all the little tasks that need to happen mm -hmm. because that's how you're going to properly scale your business. Have you sold any listings? Yes. How many? Two. <laughs> Great. Okay. But those yeah. are still like those buyer or seller. Mm -hmm. Once it's under, under contract mm -hmm. is when the transaction coordinator should get it. Yeah. Exactly. So even for the sell listings, my transaction coordinator, mm -hmm. she actually is able to start from the day that I get the listing agreement. She oh. is, she does everything for me. She wow. puts it into the MLS for me. She helps me coordinate, you know, getting a sign order and mm -hmm. getting pictures and writing the description. And all the um, marketing. And stuff. Yeah. Well, the marketing, no. Okay. The marketing, no, that's still on our team, but okay. getting it all ready, and at least she's at that point in touch with the client already. Okay. So that, you know, she'll set up the showing time and everything like that. Oh, wow. And so then at the, uh, let's say we go under contract, mm -hmm. at that point, this client is already familiar with her, and she, again, can seamlessly keep rolling that transaction for me. Wow, okay. Yeah, she helps coordinate the inspections and all of that. Wow, that would be so much more time for me to like prospect if I had someone to do all of that. Which mean? is important. The for sure. And, and, and listen, even when I first started, I think it was like four months or so before I closed my first deal. Okay. And I, I think the first year I, I did like like a little over two million. Like it was small, but it was still something, you know? But you, that's how it is when you're first year in real estate. You're getting yeah. started, you're learning building your pipeline, you're building your network, you're learning. Yeah, exactly. And was that two million in gross commission, like income, or or like um, sales volume? That was my sales volume. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, my first listing that I ever got was because I met a lady at my workout class that I always went to mm -hmm. that I made friends with, and she was selling her house. So of course I asked for the opportunity to interview for the listing, mm -hmm. and she didn't know I never sold anything before. <laughs> You, you know, it's not like yeah. something you shouldn't go, hey, also, I've never sold anything and I'd like to, you yeah. know, experiment on your home. No, you don't say that. <laughs> yeah. I'm confident no one will question you. <laughs> exactly. We don't have time to do two communities. We discussed doing the boat video. And then... We made it to downtown early now. Yes, we are. We're going to check out this venue okay. for the launch event. And see if we think it's going to be good for our event. Is this your first time seeing it? I've been here once before, but mm -hmm. it's going to be my first time seeing it, considering it for like how the space will hold my guests and how the flow of the event will be. Oh, sorry. Hi! I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you look so different. Yeah. I'm like, who is that girl? I don't yeah. remember a blue hair girl. I know, <laughs> it was blonde. It was actually purple before, and then I faded out to that silver color, oh my and gosh. then now it's blue. Awesome. <laughs> Or is that event top secret? No, you can totally no? Okay. talk about it. So it's been top secret, <laughs> but we're about to make the announcement that I've been working on building my own boutique brand and I will be launching it this coming next month. Oh my God. And yeah, so we're gonna be doing a big 
launch event, um, inviting all of our clients and all of our friends and colleagues. Um, so we're pretty excited about it. So that's so exciting. Yep, yep. So we're we were sourcing out venues and mm -hmm. getting all of the details planned now. Cool. Actually, now we're going to a place called Binks. Binks. It's actually a really cool coffee shop slash record store and like really unique bookstore that um, it's one of my clients companies, businesses, okay. that I help them find this commercial space to open their uh, business. So we're gonna go check it out real quickly and we might be hosting a little event there as well. So in here is where they have some like collector's records and books, I mean, one of a kind stuff. So it's a really cool part of the Binks Wow. Stuff. I have a 12 o'clock call that I gotta get on here. And then um, a 12.30 call. To the next, right? Off to the next. <laughs> so I, my client was there. That's yeah. who I was talking to. Oh, uh, they, they've changed the closing date back to the original closing date. <sighs> Why? So. Now we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off for no reason. Great. Again. Well, we gotta keep the house looking great. I mean, I, I did, when I pulled up, I saw that there was a one of the palms up at the front to the right is dead. Yeah, it's not looking good. We're gonna have all that replacement done, so they're working on that. Okay, it's good that we just get it right. done anyways, because again, if they pop down here and it doesn't look good, the whole thing could go kaput. So hopefully, we just keep it looking great regardless, you know? Yeah, I know, but it would have been one less month of, uh, I just think we got to manage these guys a little bit better. I mean, I don't know what's going back and forth. It's unfortunate, but it's, it would have been one less month of paying. Uh, uh, it, there's, a, there's a material cost to this. There was a huge advantage to close early. Yeah, me. no, I, I, I um, saw that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but that's it for now. I guess there's nothing. We've got uh, all the staging pulled out now. They're there pulling it out, and everything will be done next week to okay. the house. Okay, uh, I think it's ready to go. Okay, that sounds great. We so we'll just keep moving moving it along as planned then. Yep, that's where we're at. Okay, right. sounds good. <clears throat> a lot of calls. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of calls. And sometimes clients just call you just to talk about things that aren't necessarily Time needed that. to be talked about. <laughs> I, re I recall from one of your interviews, you said you're also a realtor, but you're also kind of like a psychologist too. Because you, you are. have to deal with everyone. Like they call, like clients will call you all crazy about the silliest things sometimes, and you're like, gotta calm them down. It's okay. This is how we're gonna solve this. <laughs> it's not a big deal. No worries. Yeah. You know. And what's what's could be challenging at times is mm -hmm. that like so I have me I have an admin I have a transaction coordinator we have a title company that's usually in within the parts. you know yeah but and all these people are involved like my transaction coordinator sometimes will send an email and then they'll still call me to talk about the email it's like just email the transaction coordinator back mm -hmm. ask them the questions that you have they will get you the answers that's why they're there to help you mm -hmm. you know so of course we are the number one point of contact for our clients and that's mm -hmm. totally fine but to be efficient mm -hmm. at times we hope that they go to the people that we put in place to help the transaction run along smoothly right. but still sometimes they want to call you <laughs> <laughs> so oh it's you try your best to provide resources but mm -hmm. sometimes you got to be the one to answer the phone that's true. What is the reality of being you know, in real estate? I was so excited when you wanted to come and, and follow me and I'm so always so thrilled like to be able to help younger agents and 
you know, just give you some knowledge and expose you to this market and what it's all about because when I got started, nobody did that for me. And you know, you always, no matter what business you're in, you're gonna live and learn, you're gonna make mistakes and everything, but people think sometimes it's like, oh, so luxurious and so fabulous all the time, but no, we have really bad days too. Like, just the other day, my client and I missed out on an almost a $900,000 offer because the agent only wanted to text information and wasn't a good communicator. Yeah. Um, and then another client that I was working on a $1.6 million deal on for so long, I've been trying to get them this one um, new construction property. There was only one left and I was waiting for the release and I, I communicated with everybody in the company to make sure we were first, like, cause he said he wanted it, he wanted it, he wanted it. And then the day that it's ready for release, he decides he doesn't want it. Like, so sometimes people will run you around, they'll drive you crazy and it's not so glamorous and it's shitty. Like mm -hmm. that sucks. That's like over $2 million in business. That's Gone. gone. Yeah. And all that time and effort that I spent, you're not gonna. My my time is worth something, right? Yeah. But in real estate, you have to understand it's like it's part of the job. Some days you're gonna win and you're gonna get a great contract and you're gonna get a great paycheck. <laughs> yeah. And then some days you're gonna lose. And and just because, no matter how good I am at my job, mm -hmm. I can lose too. Yeah. You know, we all have ups and downs, um, and it's again part of the job. So you have to have thick skin in this business, and you have to be able to take the bad days with the good days, um, the stress, and all of that, mm -hmm. in order to have a long-term career in this this business. Yeah, I agree, and I think, especially mm -hmm. as a newer agent at the beginning, if I lost a deal, I would have been like, that was like my devastated, baby. right? <laughs> yes. You're like, I needed every dollar. I know, but now I, I a little bit, you know, in the business, and I just, I'm okay and I just try to keep the pipeline full, you know, so that I don't get stressed about that one deal or that one thing. But what's your advice for kind of, I guess, dealing with that from a mindset standpoint, <clears throat> standpoint and, you know, how to deal with these ups and downs? I think that something somebody once told me, and again, I have to remind myself of this every single day, is that you can't change the past mm -hmm. and you can't control the future. So you can just focus on the now. No. And no, even the best of the best, of in their in their career mm -hmm. have losses and have mistakes that happen and lose deals so it's part of the job and you can't think oh it's all me 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 because it's not it's part of the job there are definitely things you can do to to help avoid the wasted time right mm -hmm. by qualifying your clients we were talking about yes. this Mm -hmm. always qualifying your clients getting them to sign a buyer exclusive if you're working with a buyer mm -hmm. you know obviously with a listing you have a, a listing agreement right. but putting certain protections in place so that you know at least at the end of the day hopefully there will be a return from your time mm -hmm. invested um, but then sometimes hey a buyer can sign the agreement to work with you you can take them out for months and then they decide to buy in Chicago and not Florida I don't know right yeah. so you can't control it all um, so you got to do your best and, um, you know, just know that you're not, it's not, things aren't happening to you only, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, everybody has these experiences. That's I mean, look, true. I just lost $2 million in business. It happens to me too. Wow. You're so <laughs> chill. <laughs> that would be. Wow. But I, that's a, that's a great advice. I definitely like focusing on what you can control and I know, but I have to remind myself that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, some days I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to do real estate. It happens. I, it happens to me too. I think that's okay too. Like sometimes you have bad days, but it's what's important to get back, right? And get yep. back on and yep. keep working. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's true. That's true. Smallest one. So okay. we're going to see three. Okay. This one is a three bedroom. Anything that you see is actually included. Like one thing, like no outside. Okay. Outside of the decor, right? Okay. Nice. Everything. Like also you have. Nice, one, big, safe. Uh, like the hood like, comes like. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to send it. If you can send me an email just about this community and what you have only, breaking yeah. it down, the prices. Do you have virtual tours of these? Uh, in two weeks, I will. Okay. I actually Any did, pictures? Uh, I have some good stuff to show Put them in there. And then. Uh, I will literally forward to him and tell him, like, hey, 
I think we should get our hands on two of these sooner than later and see what he says. Yeah, because one, the material pressing will go up. The press I have right now is what we have already prepaid and pre-done. Okay. Because as they charge us more money for windows, it yeah. has to reflect. So yeah. you're gonna see the He case. understands the value of getting an early new construction because we did it with this. He bought at the end, but he sees the value of that. <laughs> So it's super important to stay up to date on what is releasing with new construction with builders, especially in such a competitive market and right. resales are just flying off multiple offers. So if you know of inventory that's not yet on the market, that's gold. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yes. You know, so having relationships where they're giving you the heads up and showing you what's going to hit the market, you're mm -hmm. learning about inventory before it's even released. Mm -hmm. Those are the ways that you can show value to your clients mm -hmm. um, by being able to bring them off market opportunities, especially in this crazy compete, market. Right? Yeah, because right now everything's just being driven up. It's insane. Mm -hmm. So, um, especially if you're buying new construction, beautiful product. Mm -hmm. um, and you can find out about it before it hits market, that's mm -hmm. that's definitely a very valuable asset to be able to provide to your clients. Mm -hmm. Being first when it comes to, well, anything, but like new construction is really important too, right? Because if they're the first phase as far as like financially is always well, the Well, pricing, best, right? right? So as new construction developments grow, mm -hmm. as they release new phases, they always increase the prices, right? Mm -hmm. So they're essentially setting the bar in the pricing of the community. So when you get in first, you're gonna get that better, much better price point. Um, and then you're gonna see by the time that the community is complete, mm -hmm. you're already gonna have somewhat you know, a little bit of equity built in because mm -hmm. the prices have been, been raised right. as they continue to develop and complete the community. And that, my friends, is instant equity. <laughs> instant equity, yes. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. Are you calling me with good news or bad news? Um, just mediocre news. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm super busy, but every day is like a different mm -hmm. day. Like, I don't have any very str specific schedules. Really? So it's like kind of always curveballs. There's always yeah. curveballs. Yeah, there's a lot of curveballs every day. Like, yeah. look, this client needs me to go see this over here, and oh crap, I need to go check on that. Or, um, so it's it's every day is something new. So it's not like mm -hmm. always the same thing. Like, I don't. Interesting. Yeah, I don't even have prospecting in my schedule <laughs> right now. Goals. <laughs> <laughs> That's like building a business that oh, just gosh. feeds you business, right? Like Yeah, and then it just starts to roll. You yeah. know, it does. It just starts to roll and opportunities come up and yeah. I think it's good because obviously Maybe the goal is to build a business that it's not always yes. prospecting. Mm -hmm. It's you know, you build if you leverage relationships and you know, build relationships with your really close past clients, <laughs> spirit and everything like that, they will fit business to you, right? Absolutely, absolutely. The, you know, staying in touch with your past yeah, clients, yeah. working your sphere of influence, right. like you're doing social, obviously there's opportunities that just pop out of nowhere on social media, yeah. you know? Um, so, and then through other listings, you get deals too. So like one of the buyers I'm working with right now, he came to me because he called me on my listing. So listings are the gold like yes, listings are gold it. yeah so what you're doing is great focusing on listings because that mm -hmm. will not only bring you more deals more opportunities mm -hmm. potentially a hundred percent of the deal mm -hmm. there's so so much value in the, in the yes. listing especially in the competitive market that we're in today um being the one that holds the key to the listing mm -hmm. you just have to present it and then they will come i just love the process more for, for working with sellers i like the I do too. Best from beginning oh, to end, like the getting the appointment and going on there. I love working with sales. And then so you love to do marketing like me. So I, from the beginning of this business when I started, I always said I love the listing side of it. I love marketing. I love advising the client. I love showing the homes. I love negotiating the deals. I love the process of working with a seller. Now, that's not for everybody. Some people are really great and they no, prefer the buyer's idea. aspect, right? That's true. There's a lot of responsibility on the listing side, a lot more than what comes with the buyer side, mm -hmm. in my per personal opinion. Yeah. Yes, you need to show buyers homes, you need to be knowledgeable on the market, you have to be able to present a good offer mm -hmm. and negotiate, but there's still so much more that goes into it when you're also representing the seller. 
preparing the home for sale, all of those things as well. The marketing. The yeah. marketing aspect, exactly. And so, doing the, the good and the bad calls. <laughs> yes, or, or, or the cringing when you don't have answers for them and they're yes. still calling you every day. So, Good as a matter there. of fact, we have to make a call to one of my clients because it's time to reduce the price on something. So, we're here with Tiffany back at the uh, first home that we met in. It's been a long day, but it's been so much fun. <laughs> but we're, we got some questions from Instagram, so we're just going to go over a couple of them. The first one is, is it harder working with luxury clients because their needs are more specific and custom? Absolutely, definitely working with a luxury client, the expectations are higher. You know, most of those clients are more sophisticated. And they've most likely already been through a buying process before or a selling process before. So they have a bar, right, of what their expectation is already because of their past experience. Um, they wanna know that you understand their lifestyle. They wanna know that you are the best in, in, your, biz, in your field, right? extremely knowledgeable so yes it's it's more pressure more demand when you're working more responsibility um, more time when you're working with um, you know a luxury clientele okay what's your favorite part of the job my favorite part of the job oh this is a fun one because there's so much that we do <laughs> right yes um, I love the rush of when you are you get a contract mm -hmm. and you're negotiating the contract oh, and the back and forth. Like I love the rush of that. You do? Okay. That's probably one of my favorite parts of the yes. process of it. The last question, like how do we or how do you know agents in general can get started in the luxury business? Well, it's that's all you gotta do is get started, right? And maybe you align yourself with a top local brokerage that does a lot of luxury or another agent that does a luxury that you can learn from. Okay. You know, you do open houses at luxury homes for other agents, get your foot in the door, meet that clientele, learn the lingo, learn that, you know, what that that sort of property style is like to show. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta just put yourself in it, you know? You also have to act the part and know what you're talking about because people will be able to find very quickly if you don't. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think it's really, for me, you know, I started doing open houses at luxury listings, mm -hmm. putting myself in the circles of people where I wanted to transact, mm -hmm. um, marketing to luxury listings, uh, marketing to that customer, um, and then, you know, what you put out, you will receive. Yeah. So if you're only going after $300,000 clients and expires <laughs> and fizzles, that's what you're gonna get, right. right? If you start going after 500 and a million, so after so many, something's gonna happen. So you have to go after what you want. That's great advice. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you so much for everything. You're welcome, you're welcome to come visit me anytime. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's gonna be it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. There were so many golden nuggets in this video. Um, be sure to follow Tiffany Pentosi on her Instagram and on her YouTube. She's got great content. And as well, uh, my social media is on the screen. And yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye.